it's Charlie once again, and I just thought I'd show off a little bit of work in progress progress on a work in progress system that I've been working on. A sort of fake cloth physic simulation using only shaders. So if you see these fellas right here, and I press O to increase my wind up to like gale strength wind, so you can see all the grass is getting a bit, bit crazy. And you can see that these clothes are actually, you know, blowing in the wind. Uh, they're sort of catching in the wind a bit. And, you know, it looks, looks pretty decent, I believe. So as you can see, as I give this character a little turnaround, you can see that his clothes are always blowing in the direction of the wind. Um, and as for the most part, there is barely any clipping, which is something that I see, you know, cloth physics are always clipping through everything and, and going a bit crazy. I'm actually a little bit impressed with myself about how sort of fidelitous this method is turning out. So I've got a parameter for overall looseness of the clothes. Ooh, we don't want that to go below zero, otherwise it goes the other way. So if this is set at zero, you can see it's just like completely tight. And, you know, as I increase it, it <laughs> gets a little bit more crazy. It's more for clothes that are fitting to the body of the character. Um, obviously, for something like a cape, you would want to use like a full-on simulation or like bones or something. Now, the really exciting part of this is the damage system, um, you know, where I can draw damage onto characters and stuff. I've made this work with the clothing as well, so it actually kind of tatters off them. Okay, so we can have a look at these characters. You can see, you know, it's always drooping down in world space. There is a little bit of, I guess, jank when the angles change too greatly, but I don't think it will really be noticeable in game with, you know, a character that is that is upright. <laughs> um, so like this, I guess, is a bit more in line with what we'd expect to see. And yeah, you can see that looks pretty decent. I've also put in uh, sections of the clothing that can't be destroyed to prevent, like, floating islands of cloth. So, I'm just using a basic crisscross pattern at the moment. But you can see these rag raggedy bits are just, you know, sitting off of the character. Um, and these tatters are, yeah, just being deformed downwards in world space. If I was to, you know, flip this character on their side, then you can see that these are still going down. Now, they're not going to, like, jangle around with true physics, but, you know, it's more of just the the effect. Um, so you can see, yeah, this all droops downwards. If I flip him onto his back, then it's going to be sort of flush with his body. So I think this really works well with the cell shader because it's more about getting the impression of what's going on rather than super fine, physically accurate details. If I was to increase the wind again with the O button, uh, as this wind picks up, you can see that the tatters are getting, you know, more, I guess, dragged in the direction of the wind. And so we give this character a little turnaround. You know, you can see that it goes off in the direction of the wind, more so than, you know, the regular bits of the clothing. So if I was to start doodling around with these parameters, uh, I have a damage wind multiplier so you know this controls the damaged bits of the clothing you know how far they should go in the wind and how affected they should be by the wind uh, i usually leave this at 0 0.5 but this would be handy just to sort of kind of simulate different types of materials that clothes could be made out of so yeah you can see now that the wind has died down um, I can adjust, you know, the droop of the tatters of the clothing. Obviously, you know, I don't want this to go too far because then when it's animated, you know, you don't get any actual sort of swinging of the clothing. So it is, it is more for subtlety than a complete replacement for simulation and whatnot. Um, but one of the very cool benefits of this is... Ta-da! It's all... Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it decided not to show up in the optimization view mode, but trust me, it's uh, it's this color. The whole material is only running 131 instructions, so there's the proof. If you don't believe me, please believe me. 
Another cool little addition to this damage system as well. I know this isn't related to the clothing necessarily. Oh, actually, no, it is. It is related to the clothing because I have a permanent uh, wound system now. So as you can see, there's these temporary wounds, you know, a bit fleshy with some blood and the blood will eventually disappear and the wound will eventually heal. But even after they heal, you know, the shirt will remain tattered and the face will be scarred. Um, obviously, you know, I won't have scarring for every single wound, but, you know, you can see... <laughs> this looks <laughs> pretty gruesome, actually. Um, but you can see that the clothing remains destroyed, even though the wound underneath the clothing has healed. Now, this doesn't necessarily require the clothes to be completely modeled separately. Obviously, I've got my clothes sitting you know, off of the, the base character, which I think I will do for, you know, the entire game, um, just so we can get these holes in the clothes and you can see the, the scarring underneath and blah, blah, blah. But if I was to completely replace one of these characters with just the shirt material, so this is just the, the naked character model, um, and we turn the wind up with the O button, the O debug, um, then you can see this, this still does work, you know, even if the clothes were modeled onto the surface of the character, or if there wasn't, you know, some some skin underneath the model. So we've kind of got this weird uh, fabric monster. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. And yeah, you can see that it, it still works pretty well. Um, you can imagine that, you know, if the head was just a skin material, then this would still be working pretty well. So if you have followed along with my character model displacement shenanigans, we could, in theory, use vertex color alpha multiplied by the wheel position offset stuff. And if we were to go to mesh paint mode, I think we can do this at runtime. Yeah, apparently. Um, and we'll just look at the alpha channel and we'll go to the paint mode. We will select the alpha brush. So because I have one vertex channel left over, coincidentally, we could use this to, you know, stop parts of the clothing being affected by the wind as much. So we'll just paint some random areas. I know it's not very smooth. It's going to look super janky, but, you know, just keep an eye on the, uh, on the pelvis. So now if we have a look at it again and I press the O button, we get the wind going, you know, super, super cray cray. Then you can see the bits that I've painted black with the alpha vertex color aren't being affected by the wind. So you could use this for problem areas of the clothing or bits of clothing that are in areas that are like clipping really badly. So for example, you know, this, uh, this collar is kind of clipping in and being a bit janky. So we could, you know, paint it to maybe 0.5 value in the vertex color, as well as bits of clothes that, you know, maybe there's like a belt or something that's holding the clothes in place. I could paint, you know, a line of vertex color around, you know, the waist and then smooth it out. So the way that I actually do all of this, uh, it's extremely similar to my grass wind system, which you can find up in the top corner in a card here or just search uh, Prismatica Dev Global Wind System something something. I forget what it's called. It's literally just that, but with some masks applied. So I have a mask here, which I will plug into the base color. And you can see this is the mask that masks it against the wind direction. So it means that any clothing that's, you know, facing against the wind isn't going to be extruded outward. So it's just a dot product between the wind direction and the normalized world position. If I turn the character around, their back is facing away from the wind. Uh, and the reason I do this is so that the clothes that are facing the wind don't get pushed into the mesh at all. And so this is why there isn't any clipping because I'm only displacing clothing away from the mesh. I'm never moving it into the mesh. And then I also have a mask that goes in the vertical direction, in the Z axi. So this mask is here so that the clothing that is on top of the character doesn't get deformed downwards when it gets damaged. So if we get our cloth monster here, we turn it on its side, you can see that it's still only deforming the damage parts downward 
on the underside of the character. Because you can imagine if I was deforming this part down, it would just clip through the, you know, the, the skin of the mesh. So this is, this is in combination with the actual damage mask that I'm using. So if I was to just plug the damage mask in by itself, then you can see the damage mask is, you know, wherever it is, wherever I hit with my character. But then if I multiply the damage mask by that vertical mask, then you can see it's only the downwards facing damage parts that are being deformed. So that was the Prismatica TM fake clothing simulation and damage system integration TM Prismatica proprietary. I hope you enjoyed the little breakdown. Uh, if you have used my global wind system, then I'm sure you could recreate this yourself. But I may or may not make a tutorial about this in the future if you're interested. But if you would like to watch all of these systems be created from scratch, um, I do stream on Twitch and, you know, I did this within one session. So if you did miss out on all of this coming together live on stream, then make sure it doesn't happen again and follow us on Twitch. And if you want to stay up to date with Prismatica and all of my tutorials and, you know, anytime I come up with some stupid system like this, just make sure that you subscribe and hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.